She says she ended the relationship in 2007 out of guilt and now has this message for the First Lady. What can you say except, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, I wouldn't want it done to me. Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. My parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say and keep your promise. That you treat people with dignity and respect, even if you don't know them and even if you don't agree with them that you treat people with respect. They thought and showed me values and morals in their daily life. That is a lesson that I continue to pass along to our son. And we need to pass those lessons on to the many generations to follow. And Barack and I set out to build lives guided by these values and to pass them on to the next generation because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Because Because we want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. And the First Lady planning to carry on with her Be Best initiative, one of the pillars combating cyberbullying. An interesting choice considering her husband's behavior on Twitter, attacking people's looks, intelligence, and talent. And for the first time, Melania Trump revealing why exactly she focused on cyberbullying. What happened to you personally, or what did you see personally that you thought you wanted to tackle this issue? I could say I'm the most bullied person on, on the world. You think you're the most bullied person on the world? Well, one of them. If you really see what people are saying about me. That's why I, you know, my Be Best initiative is focusing on um, social media and online behavior. We need to educate the children of uh, social emotional behavior so when they grow up and they know how to deal with, with those issues. In our upcoming special, the First Lady tells us how she is chronically harassed online even when she's trying to do charitable acts. Tomorrow, right here at GMA, balancing being First Lady amid some very personal headlines involving her husband's alleged affairs. That's coming up tomorrow. Some nice furniture. I took her furniture. I moved in her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden I see her, she's now got the big phony tits and everything. And I'll use some tic tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to people. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just... I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab by the pussy. I can do anything. This girl's hot as shit. Whoa! Whoa! Yes! Whoa. Yes! The Donald is good! Whoa! <laughs> oh, my man! You don't think? All I can see is the light. No, I want you good. Come on, Shorty. Oh, you got your legs, huh? Get out of the way, though. That's a good legs. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hi, how are nice you? Nice to meet you. Terrific. Nice to meet you. Terrific. You know Billy Bush? Have a little hug with Donald. He just got off the bus. Well, okay, hug yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Melania well, said this was okay. Yeah, Donald Trump repeatedly points out how hot his daughter is, saying last year in a Rolling Stone article, yeah, she's really something, and what a beauty that one. If I weren't happily married, and, you know, her father. My she daughter is. Ivanka. Yeah. She's six feet tall. She's got the best body. Yeah, she's hot. Yet at times, his fatherly praise is downright cringeworthy, like on The View in 2006. I said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it. Oh, it's so weird. Stop You know what? You are sick. Far from protecting his daughter from being talked about as a sex object, he has encouraged it multiple times. 
on Howard Stern's radio show in 2004 and then again in 2006. By the way, your daughter. She's beautiful. A, can I say this? A piece of ass. Yeah. She looks more voluptuous than she's ever. She's and actually always been very voluptuous. It's she's tall. She's almost six feet tall. What's the favorite thing you have in common with your father? Either real estate or golf. Donald, with your daughter? Well, I was going to say sex. Ivanka gave a strong statement to the AP. She tells them, quote, there's a special place in hell for people who prey on children. That you treat people with respect. They thought and showed me values and morals in their daily life. That is a lesson that I continue to pass along to our son. And we need to pass those lessons on to the many generations to follow. The family was shattered in 1989 when Trump's affair with Marla Maples became national news, splashed across the tabloids. Marla Maples? Well, I don't want to talk about Ushoga. In fact, you don't even refer to her by name in your book. Yes. You just call her the showgirl. The showgirl. Yeah. Ivana writes she found out about the affair while on a family ski trip in Aspen when she says Maples came up to her and declared, I'm Marla and I love your husband. Do you? There were reports that last year Marla Maples wanted to make amends with you. Has she ever tried to reach out to you directly? She asked the Daily News in, the, in the London if I would accept her apology. I said, apology is absolutely not accepted. I never accept her apology. She ruined my family and my marriage, and uh, she never achieved anything her entire life. Uh, uh, I just call her the showgirl, that's all. Why accept Donald's apology and not hers? Because he was father of my three children, and he continued to be a good father. With a stunning admission from Rudy Giuliani, about that $130,000 hush money payment to the adult film star Stormy Daniels. This money was paid to Ms. Daniels, you recall, by Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. He used a household line of credit, his own money to pay him. You may recall that on Air Force One, April 5, just a few weeks back, the president told reporters on Air Force One he had no knowledge of the payment. Well, appearing with Sean Hannity tonight, here is what Rudy Giuliani said on Fox News just a short time ago. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So they funneled it through the law firm. Funneled through the law firm and the president repaid it. The president repaid it. Sean Hannity at that point paused and said, I wasn't aware of that. You've probably heard about Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. The Wall Street Journal previously revealed that these women received hush money payments after alleging they had sexual encounters with Donald Trump. What wasn't known until now is that Trump personally orchestrated those deals. We have new reporting that shows his direct involvement leading up to the 2016 election. It's based on more than 30 interviews with people directly involved with the events or who were briefed on them. Plus court papers, corporate records, and other documents. He asked me to pay off an adult film star with whom he had an affair and to lie about it to his wife, which I did. And lying to the first lady is one of my biggest regrets because she is a kind, good person and I respect her greatly. And she did not deserve that. And I'm giving the committee today a copy of the $130,000 wire transfer from me to Miss Clifford's attorney during the closing days of the presidential campaign that was demanded by Miss Clifford to maintain her silence about her affair with Mr. Trump. And this is Exhibit 4 to my testimony. Mr. Trump directed me to use my own personal funds from a home equity line of credit to avoid any money being traced back to him that could negatively impact his campaign. She says she ended the relationship in 2007 out of guilt and now has this message for the First Lady. What can you say except, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I wouldn't want it done to me.
She defended her husband again when multiple women came forward accusing him of kissing and groping them. Mr. Trump has denied it all. I believe my husband. I believe my husband. Did they ever check the background of these women? Uh, they don't have any facts. Facts may be just what Melania Trump is waiting for before she breaks her silence again. And it has been a tough year for you personally. You're not the first first lady to have to deal with her husband's alleged infidelities. Has this put a strain on your marriage? It is not concern and focus of mine. I'm a mother and a first lady, and I have much more important things to think about and to do. I know people like uh, to speculate and media like to speculate about our marriage and um, uh, circulate the gossip, but I understand the gossip sells newspapers, magazines, getting advertisers, and unfortunately we live uh, in this kind of world today. Have you been hurt though? Media what is speculating. Yeah, it's, it's not always pleasant, of course, but um, I know what is right and what is wrong and what is true and not true. You have this guy, Lindsey Graham, a total lightweight. Here's a guy in the private sector who couldn't get a job, believe me. Couldn't get a job. And then I, I see uh, Rick Perry the other day, and he's so, you know, he's doing very poorly in the polls. He put glasses on so people will think he's smart. And it's, it just doesn't work. You know, people can see through the glasses. Stupid. Loser. Sit down. Very nasty. Racist. Those are the words that President Trump used speaking to three of my colleagues this week. Three journalists. Three black women. They are Yamish Alcindor, April Ryan, and Abby Phillip. These are three consummate professionals. A grade. They can take these insults, they don't need me sticking up for them. But still, there is something so wrong with this. It is beyond disturbing, it is ugly, and I'm angry. And if you missed it, here you go. Um, on the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also saying that say the that. press- such a racist There question. are some people- Sit down, please. Sit down. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I'll give you voter suppression. Excuse me, I'm not responding to you. I'm talking to this gentleman. Will you please sit down? The same thing with April Ryan. I watch her get up. I mean, you talk about somebody that's a loser. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. She gets publicity and then she gets a pay raise or she gets a contract with, I think, CNN. But she's very uh, nasty. That's up to him. What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. But the more America achieves, the more hateful and enraged these crazy Democrats become. Crazy. They're crazy. They're crazy. She's shocked that I picked her. Look. She's like in a state of shock. I'm not thinking. Mr. That's President. okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The fragile mental state of Donald Trump was on display today in London, especially when he described Adam Schiff in a way that to many sounded like a reasonably accurate description of Donald Trump. I think Adam Schiff is a deranged human being. I think he grew up with a complex for lots of reasons that are obvious. I think he's a very sick man and he lies. I'm on Meet the Press, a show now headed by Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd. He's a sleeping son of a bitch, I'll tell you. Oh, I'd love Oprah to win. I'd love to beat Oprah. I know her weakness. Maxine Waters, a very low IQ individual. Enough. That's you know, enough. I, that's well, enough. I ask one of the, the other folks. That's I enough. Had, pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse me. That's enough. Mr. President, I, one of the Peter, questions I may ask on, on the Russia investigation, are you concerned that 
that you may have. I'm not concerned about anything with you the may have Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you? That's enough. Put down the mic, Mr. President. Are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President, I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter, go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts Well, I'm not Mike a big fan of yours either, so I understand. to be honest. So, that, so let me ask you a question if I can. You repeatedly you said... Are, you are the best. Mr. President, you repeatedly, over the course okay, of... The, just sit down, please. Well, when you, when you report fake news, no. When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. Go ahead. Mr. President, over the course, over the course of the last several days... Speaker Nancy Pelosi is trying to impeach him. I don't mean any disrespect, but it must suck to be that dumb. The radical left Democrats are trying to rip our nation apart. First, it was the Russia hoax, total hoax. It was a failed overthrow attempt and the biggest fraud in the history of our country. And then you look, the Mueller deal, you remember that mess? They had nothing. Two years, they spent $45 million and the real cost is many times that number. And now the same maniacs are pushing the deranged impeachment. Think of this, impeachment, impeachment. A witch hunt, the same as before. And they're pushing that impeachment, witch hunt. Senator John McCain. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her. Look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. I was sitting with him on an airplane, and he went after me on the plane. Yeah, I'm going to go after him. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. that you treat people with respect. They thought and showed me values and morals in their daily life. That is a lesson that I continue to pass along to our son. And we need to pass those lessons on to the many generations to follow. And now the president in real time is attacking you. What effect do you think that has on other witnesses' willingness to come forward and expose wrongdoing? Well, uh, it's very intimidating. It's a designed to intimidate, is it not? I, I mean, I can't speak to what the president is trying to do, but I think the effect is to be intimidating. Is why it was necessary to smear my reputation. Also. Well, I wasn't asking you about that, Dad, but thank you very much, ma'am. You said that in summer of 2018, the smear campaign began in your testimony earlier today. Did Secretary Pompeo at any time come to your aid? Well, my understanding from uh, Assistant Secretary Phil Reeker and Deputy Secretary Sullivan is that, um, you know, this sort of the 
rumors about me, if, uh, for lack of a better word, the smear campaign, which was behind closed doors at that point, um, that uh, there were a number of discussions between the President and Secretary Pompeo and that he actually did, um, did keep me in place uh, for as long as he could. That's what I was told. So it appears that back in 2018, the President was already making noises that he wanted you out of there. It appears that as early as April of 2018, Mr. Parnas was at a fundraiser for the president and recommended that you be removed. And then subsequently, in May of 2018, was pictured at a White House dinner with the president. And then later in May, made a contribution of over $325,000 illegally to the president's reelection campaign. Are you aware of that? I'm aware of the, the, the press about those things. Does that um, help you understand a little bit more why the smear campaign was under? That you have endured an orchestrated character assassination. That it was hatched over a year and a half ago. And that it's laced with enormous campaign contributions to the president's reelection campaign. I um, was particularly struck by your testimony, Dr. Hill, about receiving hateful calls. That you didn't sign up to have hateful calls and, 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 and the like. I guess, unfortunately, where we are today in America, that's coming with the territory. They're continuing, honestly. I mean, we're constantly having to block um, Twitter um, posts of my name and address and on, on the uh, internet. We've been doing this over the last couple of days. I don't think anybody wants to come under personal attack. Yeah, I unfortunately think that this has become the new norm and we're being led by the very top of uh, the food chain, which is our president, which is unfortunate. I'm especially disheartened by uh, his treatment of women. And I think that uh, the fact of the matter is that there's a long line of strong, talented women who have been um, part smeared and victimized by this president. But what was dispiriting was all of the accusations that were um, being fired at uh, Ambassador Ivanovich, leading her to be tweeted, uh, including by members of uh, the president's uh, family. We all firmly believe that Mr. Giuliani and others, uh, including uh, the uh, people who were recently indicted, the Ukrainian uh, American gentleman, had for some reason decided that Ambassador Ivanovich was some kind of personal problem for them. Are they, and that they had then decided to engage in just the kinds of things we've been discussing about. And frankly, she was an easy target as a woman. And I'm very sorry to hear about what's happened to Congressman Stefanik. And I think that this just illustrates uh, the point and the problem uh, that we're dealing with here today. Certainly. I was also struck by your testimony that you were also the target of false accusations during your time in the Trump administration. You testified, ma'am, about receiving hateful calls and being accused of being, quote, a mole in the White House. You testified about death threats and calls at your home, is that right? That's correct, that was in 2017. Um, Dr. Hill, you stated in your deposition you've been accused of being a mole for George Soros in the White House, correct? That's correct. Um, you said in your deposition, specifically, um, a conspiracy was launched against you by convicted felon Roger Stone on the show Infowars, led by Alex Jones, right? I don't think he was a convicted felon at the time that he launched this, so I didn't use those exact words. But it was indeed Roger Stone and Alex Jones on Infowars in 2017. And in fact, just more recently, before uh, Mr. Stone uh, was um, uh, endured his trial, uh, they were at it again, reprising the same uh, Infowars video and adding embellishments. And they said, uh, I'll, I'll quote what they said about you. We here at Infowars, this is Roger Stone speaking, first identified Fiona Hill, the globalist leftist George Soros insider who had infiltrated McMaster's staff. He said that on May 31st, 2017. Um, I presume you're not a globalist, leftist, Soros insider, correct? I think my co-mining family would be very surprised to hear all of these things about me. I agree. Actually, leftist, perhaps not so much, but, you know, anyway, the left in Europe is a bit different from the left here, let's put it that way. I agree. Um, interestingly, um, you stated in your deposition that a similar conspiracy theory had actually been launched against Marie Ivanovich. That's correct. Um, 
and you said specifically, when I saw this happening to Ambassador Yovanovitch, again, I was furious because this is, again, just this whipping up of what is frankly an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about George Soros to basically target nonpartisan career officials. Isn't that what you said? I did say that, yes. And um, I'm sure you've been watching uh, with concern what's happened to other nonpartisan career officials. We had Alex, Lieutenant Colonel Alex Vindman, an American immigrant, questioned uh, for his um, uh, criticism of the president uh, in, a, in a very unfair way, you know, basically questioning his loyalty to the country. I believe that he's also of Ukrainian Jewish descent. Would you say that? these different theories, these conspiracy theories that have been targeting you, spun in part by folks like uh, Mr. Stone, as well as um, uh, fueled by Rudy Giuliani and others, um, basically have a tinge of anti-Semitism to them at least? Well, certainly when they involve George Soros, they do. Um, I'd just like to point out that in the early 1900s, the Tsarist secret police produced something called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which actually you can still obtain on the internet, and you can buy it actually sometimes in bookshops in Russia and elsewhere. This is the longest running anti-Semitic trope uh, that we have in history. And the trope against uh, Mr. Soros, George Soros, was also created for political purposes. We learned that a dedicated public servant named Marie Ivanovich known for fighting corruption, widely respected throughout the diplomatic corps, was ruthlessly smeared by Rudy Giuliani, by the president's own son, by their friends on Fox Primetime, and a whole host of other characters. Her reputation was sullied so they could get her out of the way, which they did. And you're right, it was gratuitous. The president could have gotten rid of her any time he wanted, but that's not enough for this president. No, he has to smear and destroy those that get in his way. And someone fighting corruption in Ukraine was getting in his way. So she's gone.